What's up everyone? So if you've ever built a gaming PC, you may know that the GPU is probably the most important component for the best raw video performance. But although this is true, the CPU does play a pretty important role because it does everything the GPU can't do. Now this includes what is not limited to things like AI, uh, input, output, character and enemy statistics, data, etc. This is why you want a pretty snappy processor along with a powerful GPU. If your CPU does not meet the minimum requirements for whatever you're playing or whatever you're using, you might experience things like bottlenecks, lags, and glitches. Not fun. If you've built a gaming PC, you may also know that IPC reigns king. Core count is great and all, but only up to a certain point. And after that, IPC or the instructions the CPU can do per clock makes a greater impact. This is why an i5 quad core from uh, Intel performs better than an octa-core FX CPU from AMD. The i5 can do more iterations per second than its AMD counterpart. Although this is true and benchmarks do prove this phenomenon, how does frequency and core count relate? Say for instance that we had a dual core clocked at 4 GHz and a quad core clocked at 2 GHz of CPUs with similar or identical architectures. Technically, they're both doing 8 GHz worth of work over the same time period, correct? So they should perform similarly, right? Well, this is the question that I had myself. So what I did was I got out my Xeon X3450, my RX480, and I made a test bed to test out this phenomenon. I got some pretty interesting results. Now I will put the specifications of the test rig on screen right now and the software that I use, along with the benchmarks used, the games used, and their respective settings. It will go by pretty quick, so if you want to thoroughly analyze it, just pause it. Starting off, we have 3 d Mark Fire Strike. Now the two performed almost identically here. On screen is the physics and combined test gameplay using both variants of the X3450, and as you can see, there is no noticeable difference between the two. After it's all said and done, the dual core actually beat the quad core with the biggest difference being the combined physics and GPU score, a 7% delta between the two. Unigen having 4.0 is no different from 3D Mark Fire Strike. The delta is minuscule and definitely within the margin of error, a measly 3% between the overall scores. The dual core, yet again, taking the lead. The most interesting out of all the synthetic benchmarks is definitely Cinebench R15. Now here I expected the extra two processing units of the quad core to help out a bit, but they kind of proved incapable. 233 versus 208, a 12% difference with the dual core actually taking the lead. The crazier difference comes from the OpenGL test. The dual core averaging 89 FPS while the quad core only averaging 53. I was actually pretty shocked about this that I tested it again, but I yielded the same results. So the dual core actually she won pretty fairly. The dual core continues to pick up some W's in three out of the four AAA titles that I tested. In Shadow of Mordor, we see an 18% increase using the dual core on average, and in Dirt 3, a 17% increase on average. The gap does close in GTA 5, a much heavier CPU title than the other two aforementioned, only showing a 7% increase with the dual core winning. Lastly, in Overwatch, the newest AAA title that I tested, uh, the quad core actually gets a little bit of a boost here with its final and only win, a 400% performance increase over the dual core. So what does this all mean? Well, this basically shows that IPC really does reign supreme on average. As you can see, the dual core did beat the quad core in most of the benchmarks that I tested, mostly thanks to its frequency. Now, the amount of operations capable of a CPU does not change, and I used the same CPU, the X3450, so the architecture was the same across the board for both the dual core and the quad core. So why did the dual core still pull ahead? Now, although I, I'm not able to change the amount capable of a CPU to process, I can change the amount of time it takes for a CPU to process. And this really relates to frequency. And so since the dual core had a higher frequency, it performed better than the quad core, poor core. I'll give you guys an example. Say that Jack can pick up five apples in 10 seconds, but I want him to give me 10 apples in the next 10 seconds. Now five is the maximum that he can carry, no matter what, so we cannot change that number. What we can change is how many he can pick up in one 10 second cycle. So let's say we give Jack an energy drink and now he can pick up 10 apples in 10 seconds. He makes two trips, each with five apples. This is how the dual core is operating. Its amount of operations capable does not change, but the amount of operations it can do in a certain time frame increased per core, giving it a better single core performance and IPC on average. As we all know, higher IPC means better gaming performance, usually. It also means better software performance, usually. And so that is why the dual core usually won. 
Now I do emphasize usually an average because generally speaking, the quad core had better minimum FPS and better frame timings than the dual core. In GTA 5, the dual core actually glitched quite a bit because it only had two processing units. And GTA 5 is one of those AAA titles that takes advantage of multi-threading. To add to that, the quad core won in Overwatch because the game took better advantage of the two extra processing units. This is why when comparing two CPUs of similar IPC at identical clock speeds, it's always better to get the one with more cores. Games and programs are taking advantage of multi-threading and with DirectX 12 and Vulkan jumping into the scene, more cores is usually better. So what's the final verdict? Well, as you can see, frequency definitely helps out. Evident when the dual core handedly beat the quad core in a lot of the titles that I tested on average. Though, if you don't look at the average score, you can see that the CPU with four processing units is actually more stable than the one with two processing units. So what's my advice? Frequency definitely does play a role, but with better API, better optimization, and better use of cores and scaling, I would definitely try to go for more cores than a higher frequency. This also depends on what you like to do. If you're a gamer, you probably want something with higher IPC and frequency definitely plays a part there. If you're not a gamer and you're more of a content creator, then something with more CPU cores will definitely help out with rendering and post-processing. All right guys, so that's it for this video today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. It was actually really, really fun to make this and I kind of like this whole uh, question uh, test and answer thing that I'm doing here. I think it's pretty cool. I will have more budget builds coming on to the scene and I have some cool video ideas that I can hopefully put in motion before the end of the semester. So I'll see you guys next time and uh, it's Ozzy and peace out.